Hello, dear students, and welcome to our second session of Chapter 4, Radioactivity for LH and SE sections. By the end of the session, you will be able to define the half-life of a radioactive substance and define the activity of a radioactive sample. In addition to this, we will do an exercise taken from the CRDP website, Dalilunat. Now, before we continue, let me start by reminding you what we did last time. Last time we learned that there are four types of radiations, alpha, beta minus, beta plus, and gamma. And we learned that the alpha radiation is formed of helium nuclei and beta minus of electrons, beta plus of positrons, and gamma formed of photons like light. And we learned that for the alpha radiation to occur, the parent nucleus must be heavy. For beta minus, the parent nucleus must have an excess of neutrons. And for beta plus, the parent nucleus must have an excess of protons. As for the gamma radiation, the daughter nucleus must be at an excited state. Now, let me add a little piece of information to what we did last time, and it's about the speed and vacuum of each of these four radiations. For alpha, the speed is 20,000 kilometers per second. For beta minus and beta plus, it's about 270,000 kilometers per second. And for gamma, it's 300,000 kilometers per second. Now, what about the penetration ability? I want to remind you that for alpha, it was weak. And for beta and gamma, it was important. And of course, very, very important for the gamma radiation. Now, what is the half-life or period of a radioactive substance? It is the time it takes for half of the radioactive substance to decay. And to explain this, let's use this graph in which we have the number of radioactive nuclei as a function of time. We will start with an initial number n0 at t equals 0. And we notice, we can notice how the number of nuclei is decreasing with time. How can we find the half-life t using this graph? This is the initial number. Then what we will do is take half of it. After taking half of it, let's try to find the corresponding time. It is t, the period or half-life. After another period, of course, we will have a remaining amount that will be half of this two, n0 over 4. Then after another period, n0 over 8. To make things clearer, let me give you an example about a sample containing 16 times 10 to the 23 radioactive nuclei. What do you think the remaining number of radioactive nuclei will be after one period. After one period or one half life, it will be divided by two. Then what do you think it will become after another period? After another period, it will be divided by two also. And what do you think it will become after a third period? 
it will also be divided by two and so on just one remark before we continue these numbers that you see here are the numbers of the remaining radioactive nuclei so for example after one two three periods the remaining number of nuclei of radioactive nuclei is 2 times 10 to the 23. Now let me give you an example about some half-lives going from the shortest to the longest, starting with the astatine 217, which has a half-life of 3.2 times 10 to the minus 2 seconds going to a 7.4 seconds for the nitrogen and 27 minutes for the lead 8 days for the iodine and 12 years for the tritium then 5.7 thousand of years for the carbon 14 and ending with 4.5 billions of years for the uranium 238 Now, what about activity? What is activity? Activity is the number of disintegrations per unit time, the second in the international system of units. And the shorter the half-life, the greater the activity is. What we see here is a device that measures the activity of a sample, and it's called Geiger counter. And as I told you at the beginning, this exercise is taken from the CRDP website, Dalilunat, and here is its link. Test 2019-1, exercise 2. We'll do it without question number 5. In this exercise, I will remind you about what we did in the last session. And this last part of the exercise will not be needed but I kept it on purpose because I didn't want to remove anything from the given. Let's read the exercise and answer the questions. Cadmium is a heavy metal present in soil, air, and water and is listed as priority pollutant. Cadmium toxicity in humans is caused by smoking, inhalation of dust and fumes, and by contaminated food. Naturally occurring, cadmium CD48 is composed of eight isotopes, the cadmium-113 being a beta-minus emitter. Now, the first question is, define the isotope of an element. The isotopes of an element are nuclides that have the same charge number but different mass numbers. Now for the second question, the beta minus radiation, a type of radioactivity, is associated to a particle. Give the name of this particle. I remind you that we did it at the beginning of this session too, and I reminded you about this particle. It's an electron. Give a reason why this radiation is dangerous. Again, we talked about the large penetration ability or penetration factor, and this may cause cancer. Now for question number three, the decay of cadmium-113 is represented in Doc1 that gives us the mass as a function of time t times 10 to the 15 years. 
The first question is, define the half-life T of a radioactive substance. I want to remind you that we said that it's the time it takes for half of the radioactive substance to decay. And then, let's go to the second question. Determine, referring to Doc 1, the value of the half-life T of cadmium-113. I remind you that for T equals the half-life T, the remaining mass of the radioactive substance is equal to M0 over 2, M0 being the initial mass. The initial mass corresponds to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 divisions. So half of it corresponds to 4 divisions. Now to be able to find the period or half-life t, let's try to find the point on the curve corresponding to this ordinate M0 over 2. This is the point. And once we have the point, let's try to find the abscissa corresponding to this point. The abscissa is 8. So the time t is equal to 8 times 10 to the 15 years is the half-life t. Now, 3-3, three, three, a sample of CD-113 has a mass of 8 grams at T0 equals 0. Find the remaining mass of the sample after 3 periods. Okay, this is the initial mass. After 1 period, it will become 4 grams, so the remaining mass will be 4 grams. Then after another period, the remaining mass will be 2 grams. Then after a third period, the remaining mass will be 1 gram. You always divide by 2. Hence, the remaining mass after 3t is 1 gram, and this is the answer. Now, the radionuclide CD113 decays into indium according to the equation. Complete the equation, indicating the used laws. Of course, to be able to complete the equation, we have to know what the particle here is. But we just said at the beginning of the exercise and the given, that this particle is beta minus because CD113 is a beta minus emitter. So it's a beta minus emitter. And the equation is this one. Now to find A and Z, we will apply Soddy's laws, conservation of the mass number, which gives us 113 equals A plus 0 which gives A equals 113, and the conservation of the charge number, which gives us 48 equals Z minus 1, and this gives us Z equals 49, and the equation becomes this one. And for more training, here are two exercises that you can find them on the site of the CRDP using these two links. In the session, we learned that the half-life T of a radioactive substance is the time it takes for half of the radioactive substance to decay 
and that the activity of a sample is the number of disintegration per unit time. Thank you for watching. See you next time and keep up the good work.